Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. I admit it, I did it, I broke a thing. A little while ago in a video, I popped the MOSFET on this thing, which is responsible for dissipating all of the battery power into heat. So this thing lights up, but it doesn't discharge a battery because it can't control itself with the, the big chip on the back side here. What I needed to do was get a new one. I told you I wanted that color upgrade on the fan. Now I got the color upgrade on the fan. I want to introduce you to this because I also need to go over some stuff as to how to make sure you don't blow yours up. And oddly enough, it's Ohm's Law. And y'all know this. Let's take a look. We have our Red Odeo 165 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery on here. It is currently wired in using the alligator clips that the test comes with. That's where this thing comes into play. First off, that fan is cool. Let me get you a nighttime shot of what this thing looks like. Oh boy, pretty in the nighttime. I like it. All right, now let's get into the details. So not only does it have a color fan, it also has a color control panel. Is that light in the way? Eh, the light's fine. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of stuff down here and I got a really weird camera angle to get on. I'm gonna turn it off from its testing. It has a couple of testing methods, constant current, constant voltage. There we go, constant voltage, constant resistance, CR. Constant P is power. And what it'll do is it's gonna try and pull each one of those four things out of the battery and try and maintain it. And I keep it a constant current. It has now saved itself. And I try to run my tests at around 10 amps. We'll get into 10 amps a little bit later, but let's just consider 10 amps to be safe. So besides all of that, it also has a time discharge function. It has a cutoff voltage. I, I live dangerously. Most batteries are supposed to have their own built-in cutoff, but I always try to run them down as deep as possible to tell you exactly how much capacity is in there and also to see if they will survive the cutoff. That glare kind of stinks. Is that better? That might be a little bit better. I don't know. The glare stinks. It's a, it's a reflective screen and the camera's focusing on the reflection. So you can change all of this stuff here. It has a built-in temperature sensor, which will tell you the MOSFET temperature inside. So you can tell whether the fan is actually doing its job. And then it also has an external temperature sensor down here. So I could actually probe the battery's temperature. Over here, it could measure voltage and amperage. And each of these fork terminals are connected into two of the lugs on the terminal block. In addition to that way, of testing it with just bare wires plugged into a battery, you can also take this thing here and these shove into the terminal block. These are plated edge connectors on a printed circuit board. They're not actually metal. And then you get a DC barrel jack and micro USB, mini USB, and USB-C. And then you can also adapt this to USB-A if you wanted to do some discharge work on an old, old, old USB-A thing. But this will get you most of your USB gadgetry. And then these terminals here, as you can see, can be hooked up directly to a battery. Let's look in some of the menus while I've got this thing up here. You long press the start button at the bottom and I'm at the middle of the menu. And one of the things that's gonna help me out here, not language, not display brightness, not standby brightness, not standby time. There's the limit time discharge function. There's the external temperature calibration, no temperature probe detected, which is true because I don't have it plugged in, but you can kind of set a temperature offset so that you're, you know, you're, you can tear it out if you, if you know what you're doing. If you know why you need to do that, you know why. Voltage calibrate reference. So I can put on a known voltage source and calibrate it. We'll just consider that to be okay for now because I'm not doing that kind of testing. We've got an amperage calibration, discharge cutoff voltage. It'll go down to three volts. I can set that even lower. Let's go all the way down. There we go, zero volts. Over current protection at 25 amps. We'll get into some Ohm's Law stuff here because that comes into play. It's not 25 amp amps, period. It's 25 amps at voltage. Over power protection is 185 watts. So there you go with your wattage. Over temp, if it gets over 75 degrees Celsius for the external temperature, the, the temperature of the thing that you're testing, it'll shut off. And then this is the over temp of the MOSFET itself, 100 degrees Celsius. So it will protect the MOSFET that the fan is trying to protect right now. Zero, no load current. We're gonna currently leave that off. I said off. <laughs> okay. It's fighting me on that one. Zero all data. This is something I'm gonna need to do every single time I start a new test is zero out the data because you don't want the cumulative battery power consumed the last test to add to the battery power in this test. And you can return everything to default and then it will also do mini discharge and you can go down to zero five milliamps or lower if you wanted to or up to 10 milliamps. 
We're gonna leave that where it was. Startup info switch. This turns on or off the warning message that you get in the beginning that says, hey, this is who I am. And hey, here's a QR code to go get your manual. So we'll go back out to the menu. You can see that during my playing, I've, I've reset this a couple of times, but I've pulled out 347 milliamp hours of power. And so let's go into the menu again and let's zero all data. And we have now zeroed all data. And I pressed the button too fast because I was impatient. Get out. And you can see it's all zeros down there. And we're going to run a constant current test at 10 amps. And you just hit the start button. And then it clicks on the fan. The big light comes on depending on the speed of the fan. And we're at 12.88 volts. We're pulling 10 amps. This is going to try to seek for 10 amps and make sure that it doesn't go over or under. It's gonna do it all automatically. The old one did not do that. You set it at 10 and it kind of creeped around and then you had to get it, get it dialed in yourself manually. The power that we're pulling right now is 128 watts. If you take 12 volts times 10 amps, 12.87 times 10, this is real easy math, 128.7, you kind of just move the decimal around. So 12 volts times 10 amps is 128 watts. That's your ohms law right there. We're getting an internal resistance of 1.29 ohms. We're pulling out one and a half watt hours of energy so far and 128 milliamp hours. So we're gonna come back and look at this in a little bit and see where the numbers have moved. So while that thing is running over my shoulder, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the upgrade. The upgrade takes you from 150 watts, 20 amps to 180 watts. 20 amps. That's not much of a difference. The upgrade also has a couple of protection features built in that I just went through and showed you on the menu system there. The upgrade also has a Bluetooth app and you can run it on an older version of Android. So if you have an old Android kicking around, you can do that. It also runs on iPhone. I haven't tested it out on iPhone, so I don't know new, old or whatnot, how it works on the iPhone. It will do data logging and you can do a little bit of controls. But like I said, on the Android version of the app, it is older and my new Android won't run it, but I do have an old Android that will run it. It's an Android permissions issue, but you can still get the app out of the Play Store and the Play Store will prevent you from downloading it if your phone doesn't support it. But what the deal is with this thing is it is rated at 20 amps and it's rated at 20 amps per voltage, which is how you get to that 180 watts thing. So if I'm running it at 36, 36 divided by 180 gives you a different amperage than 12 divided by 180. I gotta put my splaining glasses on because I don't wanna get the notes wrong. I wanna turn the light off so you're not seeing the bright light over my shoulder. Okay, so the, whoa, my chair just moved. So the math that I did, let's take 150 watts as a number and you put in 13 volts, that gives you 11 and a half amps for testing. If you take 150 watts and you divide it by five volts, that gives you 30 amps of testing. And I know some of this is simple math, but try to do math on camera from memory without actually mathing and try to be right all at the same time and not mislead your audience. That's a skill I just don't have right now. So for my testing purposes, I'm really not able to go over 10 amps. Most of my world, most of our world as hams, lives in this 12 volt space. So somewhere between 10 and 13 amps is gonna keep me under my margins because that's gonna keep me under the wattage output. And you saw on the monitor, we're at 120 to 130 watts, depending on how happy and how spicy the battery's feeling at that moment. So that is where you wanna to be to protect yourself. I hope that all makes sense. You really just have to balance between your watts, amps, and volts. And if you increase one, the other number changes. So you need to make sure that you just do your real quick Ohm's law calculation and verify watts, amps, volts, and get the thing all straightened out to where you think you need to be in your testing. Real simple, like I showed you before. Let me, let me put you back on the screen over there. 12.8 volts times 10 amps is 128 watts. So if I increase this to 36 times 10 amps, it's gonna be 360 watts. I'm going to be over the limit, so I don't wanna do that. If I decrease this down to five volts times 10 amps, that's gonna be 50 watts perfectly within limits. So that's real simple math as to how that works out. And I even did it live. I use this thing all the time. I'm gonna recable this thing. Actually, before we do that, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna wait a little bit longer, then I'm gonna recable the thing. No, it's cumulative. This thing has a cumulative recorder of the power dra drawn. There we go. This thing has a cumulative recorder of the power drawn from the battery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recable this thing in, get my solar panels in line and hooked up, and then I'll show you one of the things that I think is really neat with why this tester is actually cool. Besides just showing you how much capacity is in a battery. It's a, it's a tool in your toolbox. Let me get it set up, I'll be right back. 
All right, so this is why I have the Anderson power pole block on here. I have connected the solar charger, which is this wire here, into the top one. The top one's got a 30 amp fuse. Then the battery comes into the next one down. That's a 20 amp fuse. And then the load tester is on a 25 amp fuse. I'm not doing more than 10 amps. All of this wiring is sufficient for that job. But we are reading 13.8 volts on the battery. And then over here, we're reading 13.38, 13.39. Okay, you can never have two meters at 100% agree without full calibration. And you saw there was a calibration circuit in there. If I believed that this one was true, I would calibrate that one to match. But I would really want to get like a known good desktop bench reference power supply to do that testing with. I'm not doing that testing, so it's okay. So we're taking from the solar panel to the battery 13.8 volts. From the solar panel itself, we're getting 28.6, so we've got decent sun. We're doing zero watt hours to the load. We've got zero amps from the load, from the battery to the load. You can see it up here. This is just showing that the battery's charging down here. The load is 15. Let's get back over here. E00 means no error. 78 degrees in here. Yep. Okay, so five watt hours into the battery so far. There we go. That's the number I want. My solar panels are shoving 14.6 amps into the battery right now. So over here, I can pull 10 amps out while I'm putting in 14.6 amps. So I'm gonna turn this bad boy on. Let's get you in there to see. And you hear the relay click and it's starting to sort itself out to get you that 10 amps that it wants. And now because we have the solar panel running, we're actually able to handle that voltage sag, that demand, that 10 amp draw off of the battery a little bit better because now we have power going into the battery from the solar charge controller. So we've dropped from 13.8 down to 13.6. I think that said 13.8 before. And we are pulling some more power out of here. So the capacity we've pulled out so far has crossed into the thousands. It still says milliamp hours because of the number of digits that it has to display. So this is 1.1 amps pulled out of the battery so far. But this right here is a good test case. I don't need to necessarily drain my house batteries to prove that a solar charger controller works. I don't need to stop charging my house batteries by recabling this so that I'm just doing the testing of the battery here. So this is a very good tool for me. I can test USB power packs. I can test um, those smaller, like five amp hour batteries, 10 amp hour batteries, 12 amp hour, 20 amp, whatever. And then these big boys, I've tested up to 300 amp hour batteries on this. It takes a long time at 10 amps to pull power out of a 300 amp hour battery. But it does it. The old one that I had was perfectly safe. It was me. I tried to pull way too many amps out of it and that's why it busted out on us. You get a lot of stuff in the box. Yeah, let's do the box stuff. You get a lot of stuff in the box. You get the temperature probe so you can actually monitor the temperature of your battery and shut it down if you're causing too much heat by drawing too much power. Or you can put it on your wires if you think your wires are too small of a gauge or something along those lines. You have a US to non-US plug adapter. It comes with, this is important, it comes with an external power source. This is AC powered on one end and oh, I did it one-handed. DC 5525 on the other end. Let me show you on the thing. Up here on top I have a DC 5525 power supply. This handles 5 volts to 12 volts of input and then I don't know if you can see it or not. I can't see it. There is a USB plug back there also. And what that does, number one, it keeps the memory of the battery capacity drain. Because if you remove the power source that's powering the computer, that's telling you how much has drained, you don't know how much has drained. That's not a good thing. But the plug on top runs the computer inside the device, and then the battery capacity is not um, interfered with. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle. When you, when you stick the probe in the thing, you got to account for the probe. Well, this external power source takes the probe out so you're not sticking it in the thing anymore. It comes with this really weird USB cable. You get this, it's kind of orange on the inside and minty green on the outside. Doesn't taste very good. Don't eat it. And then you get the alligator lips with the alligator lips, alligator clips with the fork connectors to plug into the terminal block. And then you get that adapter so that you can test USB devices on it. One more thing I gotta show you. Over here, there's USB ports all over the place. You've got a USB port on this side for plugging it into your computer so you can do some data logging. 
you have that USB port on the top for powering the computer inside of this device. And then you have the terminal blocks where you can add more USB ports. So this terminal block is for draining USB batteries. This USB block here is for plugging into your computer for data logging. And this USB block up here is for powering the device itself so that these numbers don't interfere with these numbers here. So there you have it. This is the new MakerHawk version. I did a video on the old MakerHawk. It's a fantastic product. It gets the job done. The other one in the series is the West Mountain Radio CBA. That one's really expensive. This one is, you know, sub 60 bucks. The one before is sub 50 bucks. And then the CBA is like $400, if I remember correctly. While I got your attention, I am on a mission this year to reach 100,000 subscribers, and you can help. Right below the video, there is a subscribe button. Click that one and help me get to that number. If you're interested in more details on the MakerHawk testers, there will be links in the description down below where you can find those. I've got some batteries to test, so I'm gonna leave you with the old MakerHawk video review right over here. So that way y'all can take a gander at that thing and see which one of these two devices you want. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.